Okay, so start by unzipping the file, the zip file, and then open it up in Photoshop. And this is what your file is gonna look like. The next thing that you're gonna wanna do is open up your vector file in Illustrator. So a vector file, it could be an SVG file, an AI file, um, a PDF file, an EP EPS file. I happen to have a PDF file right here. And so I'm going to grab this element right here. I have it all set to be outlines and it's vector. And I'm going to copy it and then come over to Photoshop and I'm going to double click this object right here and it's going to open it up in a new document. I'm going to turn off the bird and I'm going to paste in my file as a vector smart object. I'm going to make it bigger so it fills the space and the page a little bit better and I'm going to hit save. And then when I close it, it's going to automatically pull it in over here. And then I can do a few things first. So I can play with the paper color by clicking on this and I could put in a hex code. Um, if I go back to this file right here, I have some codes in here. So maybe I'll grab this like green. So copy that code and go over to Photoshop and paste it in there and hit save. And then I have this pretty tan folder or, and then I have this pretty tan image right here. I can also adjust the settings in this like a file right here to adjust the intensity. So I'm gonna open them up and kind of show you. So the first one that we can play with is this linear burn, which I'm gonna turn it really up so you can kind of see where it goes. And it's kind of gonna go, let me zoom in. It's gonna go on the outside and we can kind of play with how intense it is. I think that this is one where it's kind of nice to leave it subtle, but if you notice your image is looking a little blurry, you could go up or down with that and that might help a bit. You can also adjust how it's rendered. So like if it's rendered as a color burn or multiply, um, normal is gonna change that look too. I'm gonna go back to linear burn for now. And so just know that this is here if you wanna play with that. We could also play with the color of the shadow, just depending on like the paper that we're using. I'm gonna go back to dark, just to keep it as is right now. The next thing that we can adjust is this drop shadow right here. So this is nice. Let me get a different color to really show you. Uh, to play with if we wanna make it a different color um, and have like a darker paper. So I'm gonna save that. I'm gonna go to paper color and then close that. So if I come into color overlay, that's where I can really change the way that this looks. So I can click on linear burn and change it to be normal. And then you can see that it's going to pull in this tan color. And so it kind of looks like it's printed in tan, like within the embossing. I could lessen the opacity to make it look like it's a little bit more on that paper. And then I could change the color in here by adjusting the brightness. I could go red. I could put in a different hex color to mimic other printing styles so there's a lot that you can do in here to kind of change the way it looks i'm gonna go back though this design also has a subtle stroke on the outside so if i intensify that you can kind of see how it how it works um actually i'll, in I'll make the opacity big so if i increase both of them you can kind of see how it like where it goes i have it going to the outside right now and then the other setting that we have on here is bevel and emboss. So you probably won't need to adjust this too much. Maybe if you have really thicker, like a thicker object or you're using something bigger, you might need to adjust the depth or some of the intensity of this. But um, if you're using something like a logo that's kind of delicate, you'll probably want to keep that pretty minimal. And that's how you use a file. So I hope this helps and I can't wait to see what you guys create.